U.S. officials say this evening a Pakistani terror group linked to the Taliban was behind yesterday's attack on the U.S. Embassy in Kabul. No Americans were hurt, but the ease of the assault raises serious questions about whether the Afghans can protect their own capital. Mandy Clark takes us inside the attack. The siege ended this morning after 20 hours of fierce fighting, leaving 27 people dead, including the attackers. CBS News was among the first to get inside the high-rise building seized by terrorists. Police who had swarmed into the area showed off the bodies of the militants like trophies. But just a few hours later, at the scene of the original attack, security had largely evaporated. There's only a handful of police now protecting the site, but yesterday gunmen only had to get through this gate before they took the building and effectively took the city hostage. The 14-story building provided the perfect sniper's nest. RPG, get down. The attackers were able to launch rockets and small arms fire over the walls of the U.S. Embassy and NATO headquarters. Afghan forces, now in charge of security in Kabul, were in the lead during the counterattack, but they did have help from U.S. helicopters. The governor of Kabul seemed astonished by the tactical advantage the insurgents had, but he insisted this was a victory for the government. This is the ninth floor where the battle ended. There are shell casing that line these steps. And over here is where the last of the militants were holed up. When they realized they were pinned down, they blew themselves up. The Afghan government may try to spin this as a success story, but on the streets of Kabul, claims of security are growing harder to believe. Mandy Clark, CBS News, Kabul.